Hello, comic book junkies. Today I'm reviewing Mech Cadet U by Greg Pak and Takeshi Miyazawa. Um, this one's out from Boom Studios. So as you can see, I've got a new setup. I finally got my desk in the mail, the one that I was waiting for from Staples, um, who should have been delivered, oh, I don't know, like three weeks ago. Um, so anyways, I haven't finished cleaning up the living room, but uh, I got my cubby all set up and it looks kind of like this. Let me see if I can just, I'll show you here with my webcam. Got my comics and this cord is too short. You see? And more comics and my screen and my, my computer and yeah, so I'm all set up. I'll put you back. And there. <laughs> New webcam too. It's not as good as I'd hoped. It's from Logitech. Uh, it's mostly for streaming, so um, that's why it might be looking a bit laggy and I haven't totally figured out how to optimize it. But anyways, let's just jump into the comic book review. So I feel like I should always explain why I choose to review a specific book or floppy, and the only reason I decided to review this was because of one word. Mech. I love mech. I love all mech. Uh, my favorite anime to this day is still Escaflowne, which while not your typical uh, mecha anime, uh, still sits perfectly in the genre. Um, it has a realistic take on romance, which uh, is, you know, we all die alone. <laughs> but seriously, I love mech. I even love Gundam Wing. And it likely all started with Voltron when I was a child. Um, hell, I remember my best friend in junior high getting mad at me because I would rather play Voltron with her little brother um, and than read her Cosmo Girl mags. Uh, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> and then there was Gundam Seed um, with the overly feminized characters. Uh, I don't know who this was actually made for, uh, but when I was 17, I really, really liked it, so I guess it was made for, like, my 17-year-old self, um, or maybe I was a bit older when it came out. Anyway, but one of the best things next to Japanese mech animations and comics, um, is North American mech. Wait. That's not right, is it? Well, actually, although artist uh, Takeshi Miyazawa is Canadian, um, he has a Japanese heritage, I believe, his name's Japanese, um, and apparently he's known for his style, which incorporates manga sensibilities. Seriously, this is what Wikipedia said. I, I wish I had manga sensibilities. I don't know what that means. Honestly, I didn't feel as though this comic was terribly reminiscent of Japanese uh, manga in, in actual um, art style. In fact, I found it more along the lines of like maybe Iron Giant. Um, I thought this issue was really cute and it gave me uh, enough of the side plot involving this bitchy female character that I kind of wanted to find out how things go for her. So I probably will read the second issue. Um, not really big on the main character, he's kind of wishy-washy, one of those goody-goodies that, you know, with big aspirations and, you know, uh, the underdog, the typical underdog. So let me just get into the plot. <clears throat> Basically, you have these cadets who train to work with these giant mech, and apparently the mech actually chooses the cadet, except that that doesn't happen here. Something goes wrong. <sighs> Narrative hook warning. Anyway. Our main character is this janitor kid named Stanford, and you pretty much can guess that right away what's going to happen uh, due to the foreshadowing on the second page. Which I don't really feel like I'm being bad uh, or for showing you, I don't feel like I'm ruining it for you. Um, the preview summaries already ruined that factoid for you anyway. Thank you, traffic. 
And this is a pretty common uh, manga narrative. Ordinary people suddenly becoming extraordinary, or rather thrown into extraordinary positions. And I mean, this makes sense, I guess, when you consider George Pack's previous works. Let's see, shall we? Um, a lot of Marvel comics. A lot of Marvel comics. Um, that I haven't read, so I have very little to base that claim on. Ooh, uh, what if Submariner? Um, why haven't I read that? Uh, I'm gonna have to read that, let's take a look. Oh wait. Oh, that's not the type of cover I would pick up from the shelf. But, uh, maybe the inside is a bit more redeeming. Let's take a look. I see pink and pastels and- oh no, nope. That's why I haven't read that. God, that's disappointing. Sexy Submariner doesn't have the greatest luck when it comes to artists. <sighs> Crap. Anyway, let's wrap up some final thoughts. This was a pretty good issue. It got straight to the point. I didn't really discover too much about the characters about um, in general and their personalities, but I at least understand that our main character is basically unassuming and nice, um, while the mean girl Sanchez, whose name, by the way, is unveiled to the reader on clumsily when she introduces herself to the robots, she's, well, mean. She's, she's just pretty mean um, and super ambitious. And that's how much we know about her. Um, so I'll say this series is worth checking out. It's a family-friendly story about a boy and his bot. And now that I've said that, I'm suddenly realizing that doesn't sound very family-friendly. <laughs> so, uh, until next time, read something good. <laughs>